Welcome to Mojo Talks. Uh, today on Context is King. As always, we're joined by Ash. How you doing? Very good. So in our last segment, you mentioned how 2018 is starting to resemble 2008. And I, I just want to know what you mean by that. I don't know if anybody listens to me. Yeah, uh, so we started in 2006. And when we started in 2006, there was a little bit of euphoria and optimism about like the web and, and like, video is the future. And then in 2007, when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, it took practically the whole economy down. And then there's always a ripple effect. So a lot of our peers, and broadly speaking, in the media industry, in the content industry, digital media and online video, there was kind of like a retrenchment. All of a sudden, it was like, oh, the good times are, are over. Let's not be so bullish and optimistic. And what you saw was, all of a sudden, companies scaling back. Meaning, if you were a traditional media company and you sat on a lot of money, you didn't really see the incentive to invest cash and possibly lose money, therefore affect your current earnings, in something that was very speculative. Mm -hmm. And then if you were a venture-backed startup, all of a sudden it didn't make sense to just throw money at something when there may not be a pot of gold on the other side. So if you take a look at what happened in late 2017, when overall the macro trend, now that the, the web is here, it is present, the web accounts for more revenue than print, obviously, and, and you know will eventually surpass TV advertising as well. But when companies didn't necessarily hit their targets for revenues, there was a bit more subdued and somber note, where all of a sudden you saw with Vox, scaling back on Facebook or programming, Vice or BuzzFeed all or of them, you know, even CNN Digital that's been making a big push saying digital is the future, we're going to be multimedia, they're scaling back. So every day now as an executive, uh, I do see companies acting a bit more serene. They're not just like throwing money and burning money and pursuing everything. It's you're, you're, It really does feel to me a bit like 2008 again in that all of a sudden everybody is a bit more realistic. Now, let me just actually turn the tables. Where were you, for example, in 2008? It's interesting you bring that up because in 2008, I had been working, I'd started working for Entertainment Tonight. You know, big TV, uh, it was ET Canada, but it was, it was still affiliated with, with Entertainment Tonight. And I remember I actually had some personal projects that I was really invested in and I didn't have enough time to do those. So I quit my job at ET Canada to pursue uh, my independent stuff. Uh, and that was two weeks before the world economy collapsed. And then I figured I'm just gonna go freelance and then there was no freelance work to be had for a long time. Oh, right. interesting. So that's, so, you experienced exactly what happened, right? I mean, you know, Lenin used to say that war was the accelerator of history, and that's what recessions do as well in a way. They set you back, but they also accelerate things. You know, before 2007, a lot of executives at old media companies were like, hey, whatever's going to happen with digital and traditional is not my problems. I'm going to retire, and the guy replacing me, that's his problem. What Lehman did is it brought that up, right? And then again, 2011, you had a similar thing where, Again, there was this kind of like another hit to traditional, and I think that's what you're seeing now in many ways again. Uh, so it's good. Look, fundamentally, I think all of the companies that are heavy in digital will be fine if they don't make boneheaded moves. But I think what you're now just seeing is like 2008, a little bit of the hype has left the market, and ultimately that's the best news we could have. But everything resets eventually, right? So uh, you know, I imagine that if 2018 is like 2008, Will 2019 be like 2009? Uh, well, I don't know if 19 will be like nine, but I will say that the companies that are profitable and are going to invest in the face of weakness around are going to come out pretty strong. And we watched Mojo twice in our history in our own little anecdotal small purview. We've, we've experienced that. In 2007, when we saw everybody kind of freak out, we actually doubled down on web video. And then in 2012, I've mentioned this on a previous show, when Next New Networks and Revision 3 folded their cards and said, we're not going to continue, we're going to join other entities. I went out and got a mortgage on our condo and doubled down on the company, uh, which may have proved cu quite stupid if I ended up living in a refrigerator box in the back alley, but it paid off. So what we're doing now is kind of we're saying, look, it's good. Last year we didn't drink the Kool-Aid and start throwing money after stupid initiatives just because others were doing it. So we're just a little bit more careful, but for us it's kind of like we don't really feel like we need to make any major changes. Uh, the only thing we're seeing is you know that expression where if you're trying to outrun a bear and a bear market, you don't necessarily need to outrun the bear. You just need to outrun the other guy that's trying to also outrun the bear. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good one. Thank you very much. On that note, uh, keep running from those bears, and we'll see you guys next time.